Hey folks, this is Vint with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Card Survival Tropical Island. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 25 bucks. This is a card-themed island survival game where you can either choose a pre-made character or you can create your own character and attempt to survive as long as you can on this island. The pre-made characters have their own perks that they start with. Whenever you create a new character, you'll be able to customize that to some degree. You see, you'll be earning something called sun points and moon points as you play the game. Sun points are earned at the end of every day, and moon points are earned one every 30 days. And these points allow you to unlock more customization options that can either make your life more challenging or make it easier on your next playthrough. So there is like a rogue light element to this. I'm going to use that lightly. It's not a rogue light. It's a survival game. But you will be unlocking new perks that will give you better bonuses for your next playthrough, of course, you can make things harder too. You can start the game, for example, with a particular shade of skin, which may help with sunburn or may not. It all depends. Once you actually get into the game, you'll be sort of overwhelmed, I think, with the UI at the very beginning of the game. I still am, truth be told. There, I'm, I'm sure there are some little tips and tricks that I simply don't know about that could make my life a whole lot easier, but I still find myself right-clicking several times to move something from the bottom row, which is where my personal inventory is, to the middle row, or into a chest, for example, um, which is like on the top or middle of the screen. And I'm constantly like right-clicking or dragging. I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. I just, I just don't know how. Uh, that, that's one of the things that this game just has, I think, an issue with is it doesn't ease people into it. It doesn't hold your hand either. Um, I think on my very first playthrough, I made it to day two or three and died of thirst because rain wouldn't come. And I, <laughs> I was dead. I, I couldn't, I didn't know how to get water. Uh, this, this game will challenge you to figure it out. It's, it's one of those games that you have to figure out. Um, there is an extensive crafting system and a blueprint system. You start off the game with like simple recipes. And then as you find new materials in the environment, as you craft things, you'll unlock research. Now, you don't need a research table or anything like that. You just simply say, I want to research this. And then over the course of time, you'll get it. Um, the island itself is fairly massive. Um, and you'll have some objectives to complete um, and you'll even get to choose what end game you want i haven't to truth be told i've never done it yet um, i'm still on my second playthrough and i'm set i have 75 hours in this playthrough um which is crazy uh it's just <laughs> it's that's yeah it's i'm taking my time with it let's just put it that way You'll be able to craft items to put onto your character. And all of this is important because you've got these... On the left-hand side, you've got these status effects like thirsty, hunger. Um, there's even bad things like there's uh, mosquito bites. Uh, you'll get itchy sometimes if you stay in an area with mosquitoes. Sunburn, depression because your social meter is low. You'll have to figure out ways to combat these negative status effects. And like in The Sims, you kind of have to, um, you know, keep these bars from getting too bad. Um, each biome in this island offers something a little different, like the beach will offer various trees. You can explore each location and find new things, but typically you have to figure out, okay, this biome has this, this, and this, and, and I need these things to craft these things. It's a matter of figuring out where things are and what you can do with them. And I think that's the huge challenge to this game. What what should I be doing next? How do I combat the status effect so that I don't die? How do I make salt, uh, you know, so I can make these cooking recipes? Um, and, and truth be told, you once you get a, a steady supply of water and food and you keep your depression low, you can, for the most part, 
start taking your time with it, but you are up against the clock. What the game doesn't tell you is that there is a drought. There's different seasons in this game. There's like a regular season and then wet season, then dry season. Dry season, rainfall doesn't happen, so you need to find a way to store water. And I'm trying to be as vague as possible here and not spoil too much for you because a lot of the fun of this game is exploration and discovering things on your own. Um, but like I said, um, that that may involve a wiki or two because the game does not really tell you what you need to know, in my opinion. There are help menus, don't get me wrong. There is a glossary of help topics, but I feel like it's purposely vague in some places. Like I, I wanted a step-by-step -step instructions on how to do something, but I could never figure out. I would have to go to the wiki and be like, you know, this is what I need to craft this. Like sometimes building something is in stages, like stage one or these crafting materials. When I got to stage three, I'm like, oh, I just realized I don't have this yet. So now this project's going to be on hold and I've wasted these materials building this. I wish I would have known that I needed this before I got to stage three, that, that kind of thing. But a wiki would tell you that, but in game it doesn't. It's just little things like that. Um, the game is brutal. There is a safe mode that you can toggle on. My beef with it is that it only brings you back to the beginning of the day that you died. And by then, if you're dying of thirst and hunger and don't have anything to do to combat that anyway, you're dead. So, like, I, I wish there were more safe options available to that player. But overall, this game is really fun. Again, 75 hours. I jump into this for about half an hour to an hour and I slowly work my way out because there are all sorts of different creatures in this game that will try and kill you. Um, you can even make a, a friend pet kind of thing and you will need that to combat, you know, depression. Um, you can even make uh, Weston, which is like a a Wilson lookalike from uh, the Castaway movie with Tom Hanks. I love that. Little things like that. If you enjoy survival games, uh, hardcore ones, then you may want to take a look at this one. Just be warned that it's fairly realistic and that you have to manage your status effects all the time. Um, but I think what brings me back to this game is that whole character creation aspect where you can earn sun and moon points and then unlock new things and make your next run easier. I've unlocked all these things with my, my second character. Uh, and I can't wait to try the third character out when I get to them. Uh, it's going to be bittersweet when it happens, but I can't wait. And that way I, I'm hoping to have an easier time with it. Uh, you even level up various professions as you do them, whether it's crafting or, you know, e e swimming, different things like climbing a tree, archery, all of these things. And on, on top of that, you've got diarrhea because you had too much coconut water, or you've been out in the sun too long, or you're near mosquitoes all the time. So now you, now you need aloe vera to take. It's just, there's so many things in this game that uh, will surprise you. And I think that, that's a really great mechanic. I love that. So do I recommend this game? Yes. Just be warned that it's not a walk in the park. And I don't think the survival guide is a complete uh, experience to help a new player out. But I do recommend this. It's a fantastic game. Go check it out. This is Vince. Thanks for watching. And I will catch you all next time. Take care.